Thank you for watching. We are Boys on Film. Raj is here. Hey, Phil. Uh, today we are talking about Tom of Finland, which I have to say, in the cinemas, kind of passed me by a bit. I really wanted to see it, but I never got around to, to watching it. I think this film has been kicking around for a while, actually. Yeah. Um, and it's just sort of finishing the film festival circuit. Um, but quite interesting um, that we haven't heard much about it until now. <laughs> anticipated it was I mean mm. during the making of the movie so many people were talking about it because they were wondering how they were going to bring it to the big screen because it's such an important story in many ways I think for you know for the LGBT scene for gay history and also for people that don't really know much about the story because I, I have to admit I didn't know much about the roots of of the story itself. I'm right there with you actually. Mm. When you think about Tom of Finland, you see his artwork and images everywhere as a gay man just growing up in life from, yeah. you know, books and t-shirts and paintings on walls and artwork on walls. They're, they're kind of, it's iconic imagery. Hugely iconic, yeah, definitely. And I don't think that you know, no one's ever thought to do this before. It's actually quite surprising. Because it goes way back, this story. Yeah. Um, Way back to World War Two. Exactly. <laughs> it it, it is a surprise that, yeah. that nobody's thought about bringing it to big screen. I suppose because LGBT history is very much at the forefront of, of consciousness now, especially with the history legalisation and obviously mm -hmm. countries legalising gay marriage. It's quite, it's quite a prominent thing, isn't it, in the news? Yeah, well, you think with stories like Stonewall and how many movies and documentaries and, you know, different versions of storytelling that have been made about that very important part of our history that, you know, we would have seen something of Tom of Finland earlier, but yeah. we just haven't, so... It's good that you referenced um, Stonewall. Did you see the movie? Did you, What did you think? I haven't yet, because I, it's gotten a lot of negative reviews. Yeah. I think that could have improved on a lot of aspects of it, but, yeah, I, I enjoyed it, but I don't think it... I, I think it could have been a lot better. It's definitely on my list. I, I'm not going to judge the movie based on what critics think. Um, because so many people voice their opinion about how a movie should be and have strong feelings about did they do it right, did they do it justice, did they do this character justice, yeah. was this portrayed correctly, so... It was very glossed over. Um, I don't think Tom of Finland was. I don't think it was glossed over. It felt more real. It felt really Stone. gritty, actually, to me. God can be this night and I don't let me get my pops toasted. Tämä ei joku pieni näyttely tai... Amerikka. I was actually really surprised that the story went back to World War II and told the story of uh, Tuko? Toko? I think so. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his name right. Um, you know, how he served in the military um, and basically just did his little doodles of these iconic artworks now and yeah. kept them in private. And, you know, when he felt he was in the safety of, of others, you know, he would show them the artwork and people would flip out over it saying, it's really good, it's really good, it's really good. But you're living in a world that was much different than ours today. Um, and it was also very dangerous to show this artwork because it definitely landed you in trouble. And Toku got into a bit of hot water a few times in this film. Well, they were so strong in many ways because when you consider how dangerous it was back then, I think it is still to this day quite dangerous but obviously not in the same league as it was back then for many reasons but I think these people you know kind of were quite defiant they were you know kind of charging through almost because what they believed in and they knew that it felt right. One of the more powerful moments of the film is when you know he's showing his artwork to a potential art buyer or someone in the art world with a bit of influence and he's like you can't show those you, you can't show those images to people because it's dangerous and He's like, but it's just a piece of paper. <laughs> but I think, you know, on this, pe on this piece of paper, he was actually capturing in a very realistic way what gay life was. Yeah. And, you know, all, with a little bit of fantasy. And I love the little bits of the film where the leather guy keeps appearing randomly throughout the film, yeah, yeah. which was quite interesting. Uh, but yeah, I think it's very iconic in a sense. And maybe we take it for granted that that is kind of what gay life is. You know, it's pictures of nice men in the yeah. woods getting off with each other, and he was probably the first person to ever really depict that in a very real way, which um, is a hugely important part of our culture. The film surprised me in many ways. One of the reasons was that I thought it was going to be more graphic, because obviously the 
the pictures demonstrate they're graphic sexually charged yeah you know i mean it's it, like you say it's painting a picture of what was happening and they're almost caricatures in in a lot of ways because parts of their body are bigger than they probably should have been yeah because <laughs> they are kind of like caricatures the yeah. pictures aren't they and i thought it was going to be a bit more a bit more graphic it wasn't and in some ways i'm glad that it wasn't because it it hints at that but it doesn't have to show it it's yeah. almost like you make up your own mind of of what went on back then but when you fantasize about such things it, and kind of in your mind it is a caricature yeah. and you want the pecs to be bigger and you want the hips to be bigger and other certain areas to be bigger and you know that was quite interesting compared to the reality of what his life was well it makes it more attractive doesn't it yeah and that's the whole point of the of the pictures because that's why they were so popular i think yeah. because they were over the top and they were you know the fantasy when his fans actually met him in real life they almost worshipped him like a god yeah yeah and he was kind of a very um a shrinking violet in a little way i mean he was confident but he was not outwardly confident you know and then he would arrive at these leather events and basically people worshipped him like a god which i thought was quite interesting so star rating i'm gonna go for 3.5 i'm gonna go for 3.5 as well liked it a lot yeah and i learned a bit from it like you say, it's a, it's a history lesson, which, you know, I think in movies it doesn't have to be just a history lesson, because I think a lot of people would switch off if it's just about a story from way back that they can't connect with, but I think it, it did teach me a lot of things, and, and didn't entertain me as well. It's quite funny because at this age I think I like to know everything about gay culture and gay history, but I, I haven't. I was educated, I learned something new about our culture, and I think if you're anyone who's interested in this type of film and knowing a little bit more about how, what the road was to sort of have the freedoms that we have today, then you should check out Tom of Finland too. And if you are wanting a copy of Tom of Finland, the movie on DVD, we are giving away a very special limited edition double play DVD on our websites as well at filmmarriott.net and ekmusicblog.com. So uh, don't forget to check us out um, if you haven't already and like and subscribe and thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next video.